Hello everyone, we are on chapter 8, lesson 3. We're learning functions and equations. So, two things that we're going to be learning is right and equation. to represent a function. The next thing is we're going to graph linear functions. And we'll also explain what a linear function is. So linear is resemble a line. So this is a straight path. So what do we notice in the graph? It forms a line. So everyday uses of functions I'm sorry, the everyday definition of, fun of a function. So a function is the purpose for which something is designed or exists. So the math definition of a function, a relationship that assigns exactly one output. value to one input value and we'll go over functions more as the um, lesson progresses so real world link it says the table shows the amount of money carly earns based on the number of hours she babysits Write a sentence that describes the relationship between the number of hours she babysits and her earnings. Say, so for one hour, she earns $6. Two, 12. For three hours, 18. And four, 24. So I noticed that for every hour, she earns $6. Does she earn the same amount each hour? Explain. Yes. Her increase, I'm sorry, her earnings increase by six. I'm also, just for future reference, if we were to graph this, these would be my x coordinates, these would be my y coordinates. And this is also going to put, be my input and my output. So I want you to go ahead and write that down. That way, this is going to um, be an easier introduction into next lesson, tomorrow's lesson. Or today's lesson. I'm not, or no, I think it's tomorrow. All right, so example one. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So yeah, in our graphs, we have our input is x and our outputs is our y. So these are going to be our ordered pairs. Now if we remember from last lesson, since this is increasing by 9 each time, we know that we are going to have 9x. So 9x is going to equal y. The Now because we're making a function, we're going to set it equal to y. So I know when x equals 1, It says y equals nine, so that is true. So I do. So this is my equation. I don't have to change my equation. I know my equation 
is going to be 9x equals y. Because every time I input my x value, my output matches from the in my table. So example, if x equals 2, 9 times 2 equals 18. So y equals 18. Now go ahead and write an equation um, for a. So if I notice, this is an increase by 16. And like in the example above, if it's an increase by 16, that way that means my equation is going to have 16x. And I'm going to set it equal to y. And the reason why I'm putting this space here is just in case if I need to add more to my equation. But with these two problems, we actually, I don't think we're going to have to. So when x equals 1, it says y equals 16. So we're going to test to see if it's true. 16 times 1 does indeed equal 16. So my equation 16x equals y, or my function, is true. So it says you can also graph a function. If the graph is on, on a line, the function is then called a linear equation. When graphing the function, the input is the x-coordinate and the output is the y-coordinate. So my input is x, my output is y. And remember, this is called an ordered pair. This is for when I'm graphing. So example two, graph y equals 2x. So step one, make a table of ordered pairs, then select any values for x and substitute these values to find x and y. So what that means is we have to graph y equals 2x. I'm going to make my function table. So I have x. And then my function is 2x. And then I have y. So my function, my function, this is that's the function tape uh, symbol, is 2x equals y. So if x equals 0, 2 times 0 is 0, and that means y equals 0. I'm sorry. This needs to be 2 times 0. So if x is 0, y is 0. So that can be written as an ordered pair. Now if x equals 1, 2 times 1, that equals 2. So my next ordered pair is 1, 2. Because that's my x and that's my y. If x equals 2, so 2 times 2, y equals 4. Now with this information, I can go ahead and graph this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can go ahead and graph this. So that's my first point, 0, 0. My next point is 1, 2. And my last point is 2, 4. So if you notice, this is a straight line. So this would be a linear function. Just like shown in the example here. So go ahead and try B and C. Remember create a function table just like I did above and that should be able to get you give you your um, your ordered pairs and you'd be able to graph these so pause the video so I'm gonna go ahead and do a with you guys with a we have oh, I'm sorry B y equals x plus 1 so I have my function here x plus 1 now I'm gonna use the same three numbers as I did before 0 1 and 2 I'm using these numbers because I know these numbers are going to be easy to work with. So there's 0, 1, and 2. So when x equals 0, I have 0 plus 1. That means x equals 0, y equals 1. So my ordered pair is going to be 0, comma, 1. When x equals 1, so 1 plus 1, y equals 2. So I have 1, comma, 1. When x equals 2, y equals 3. So 2 comma 3. Now I can take this information and I can graph it. So 0, 1 is here. 1. I'm sorry, I made a mistake. This should be 1, 2. 1, 2 is here. And then 2, 3. And then I can just graph and put an arrow. 
So now that I did A with you guys, go ahead and try B by yourselves. Or I'm sorry, since I did B with you guys, go ahead and try C by yourselves. Alright, so for C, my function is 3x plus 2, and I plugged in as my x's, 0, 1, 2. As my y's, I got 2, 5, and 8, so I have 0, 2, 1, 5, and 2, 8. And on my graph, 8 is above my graph, but I just kind of estimated so I have a straight line for my linear function. So let's look at example three. Martino constructed the graph shown, which shows the height of his cactus after several years of growth. Make a function table for the input output values. The three input values are one, two, and three. The corresponding output values are 42, 44, and 46. So, Based on, we made it, he made a table, so we have 1 and 42, 2, 44, 3, 46. So my x-axis, when it equals 1, y equals 42, 2 is at 44, and 3 is at 46. So we have the graphs shown here. So number 4 says write an equation from the graph that could be used to find the height y of the cactus after x years. So if I notice here, it is we're adding 2 each time, plus 2, plus 2. So I know my equation is going to have 2x. So my 2x is going to equal y. Now here comes the tough part. I need to add, so I'm going to use these numbers here. I know when x equals 1, y has to equal 42. So here's 2 times 1, and my y is going to equal 42. So what do I need to do for my equation to be true? Because 2 does not equal 42, but if I add 40, 2 plus 40 does equal 42. So if I have the equation 2x plus 40 equals y, this is going to be my equation for my function. And now I'm going to test it out with my other numbers. When x equals 2, it says y is supposed to equal 44. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 40 is 44. And if x equals 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 plus 6, I'm sorry, 6 plus 40 is 46. These are all true, so that means my equation works. So 2 to 44, 3 to 46. So go ahead and try D and pause the video. So the first thing I did was I took the information from my graph and I put that information into a table. So when x equals 1, y equals 20. When x equals 2, y is 25. When x equals 3, y is 30. When x is 4, y equals 35. So I know since this is an increase by 5 each time, I'm going to have 5x in my equation. So I'm going to set that equal to y. Now I need to make the equation true. So to do that, when f x equals 1, y is going to equal 20. So in order for 5 to be 20, I'm going to add 15. So 5 plus 15 equals 20. So I know my equation is now going to be 5x plus 15 equals y. And now I'm going to test it out just to make sure. So when x equals 2, y equals 25. So if I have 10 plus 15, that equals 25. When, and then when x equals 3, that equals 30. And when it equals 4, it does equal 35. So I know my equation is true. And that's the end of the video, so thank you for watching.